All right. Let's uh, call the Conway School Committee meeting order. Uh, oh, you ready? All right. Uh, we'll uh, have a motion to start. You don't need a motion to start. Don't need a motion no, to start. No, you can start. You have that in your authority. Well, there we go. It's Vice uh, Chair. All right. It's 6.05 p.m. and the Conway School Committee meeting shall commence. <laughs> there we go. So let's review and approve minutes of December 18th, 2018. Mm -hmm. High quality minutes. Why, thank you. Thank you very much. Motion to approve? Sure. Second. Second. Onward. Okay. Uh, how about uh, financial statements? And we have signed warrants. We do have signed warrants. We have nine warrants. Totally. <coughs> Okay. Good. I want totaling fifty thousand one hundred ninety-one dollars and eleven cents. Thank you. Okay. There you go. And also, I emailed yesterday, but also placed in front of you the results of the of operations for the grammar school through December mm -hmm. and year to date. We've expended 56% of the budget with $1.1 million or almost $1.2 million remaining out of the budget. Um, the budget at this point is tracking according to plan. There's nothing out of the ordinary to note. Um, the only thing I would bring up that you would probably notice is on page three, we do have that same salaries for long-term subs, which is over budget by $18,443, and that's because that line is typically not budgeted. However, the person who was out, um, their salary savings amounts to $17,328, so it's pretty much a wash for uh, the salaries that were, that were saved by the person who wasn't being paid compared to the sub who was replaced. What about this, the, the general sub line being over? Yeah, the general subline, I'm going to have to take a look at that and see if it's over more than normal. I did notice that um, as I was printing out the report. So, yeah, that does have a budget, and it's a little bit uh, over compared to uh, budget. So I'll take a look at last year's and see if it's, like, excessive versus what we've done in the past or whether or not, um, you know, there's something particularly that, that's happening this year that didn't happen last year. discussion about the budget now or later on. I don't want to jump the gun. Mm -hmm. Can we give a copy of it to Alan in the meantime? Yeah. Oh, thanks. Oh, that. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. There you go. You, you mean this one? Yeah. yeah. Do you have an extra one? I, you want, I think do you want mine. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I have. Well, there's yeah, a copy right Look at mine right now. And then, um, I'll find, I, I have a digital copy of it. <clears throat> so this is the development of the budget for FY20 uh, up to this point. Um, I know that Judy has met with you to do, mm -hmm. to do updates um, into the local budget, and the budget has been updated at this point for um, steps so that uh, it does not include salaries yet, because obviously that's a, that's a part that is still under consideration, but in terms of the, the COLA steps that are necessary to uh, to put into the budget, those are built in. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we don't have yet is we obviously need to have a sit down to discuss the expenses that are non-general fund and how they apply to the budget. So what's copied in here was last year's, but you know, as we build the budget this year and look at the revenues that are coming in, you know, that's a piece that goes into this. But what we wanted to share with you is, is this is kind of how, uh, this is our methodology of bu building the budget. Mainly we have, if you look at the two uh, pink and blue columns, most to the right, we have the all funds budget, and then we have the what is the local budget, which is in blue. So the thought process is that obviously it takes more funds than just the local funds to fund the school. 
their grants and then there are other special uh, revenue accounts that are used. If you look at those green headed columns with choice, Title I, the SPED assistance, the WINGS program, the early childhood, those also contribute towards funding the budget. So what we try to do is build it so that you have everything on one page so that when you look at the budget, you see not only the local contribution, but the other sources of revenue that fund the budget, and that's built in behind the scenes. So in other words, if there's a teacher who's being paid out of Title I, we carry that from the salary page all the way up to the Title I page so that we know the funding source, and it goes into the all funds uh, budget, which is local plus t grants and other revenues. Quick question, maybe sure. it's a typo. Are we looking at the Conway budget or the Sunderland Elementary School budget? Uh, it's <laughs> it's Conway. <laughs> it's because right. it says it says CGS here, but yeah, there's a little so little issue. Right. That. Right. So that's, yes, that's a typo. Yeah, that's a typo. Yeah, if you look at the top of the yeah, these are blue. Ah, uh, there we go. Thank you. So, if it makes you feel any better, the same thing happened with Deerfield. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, so this will give you a look at it, and I mean, in the next meeting, if, you know, we can take it. I mean, this is an act, this will be an active budget where we can throw it on the screen. You could put in percentages. We could change amounts that will give you, you know, a live bottom line total. Mm -hmm. And between now and then, obviously, we'll we'll have meetings with administration to to flesh out what we know about some of the other funding sources as best as we can. I mean, we don't have the governor's budget yet as well, so um, mm -hmm. a lot of things are in play right now. But at least we have the structure in place to to put the pieces in as they as they come in. So I'm just looking at page four, transportation bid going out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. How's that going? Not tomorrow. Is <laughs> <laughs> that how it goes out? It's, it's complete and ready to go out. So. Um, <laughs> And then it, it closes by the end of the month. So, um, you know, we well, probably have numbers for February based on what the outcome of it is. I mean, there's, a, there's a general, there's a longer time to award the bid, but, um, right? Right. Yeah, like Usually yeah. you only get one bid, though. Well, well, last time we got two. Vastly different. True. <laughs> Any questions about the what you see already or the current financial state of affairs? Is it worth jumping to discussion of the budget so you don't have to stay for the remainder of the meeting? Um, sure. Good with us. Mm -hmm. We don't like to pour okay, people nice. more than often, <laughs> more than we need to. I do the best. <coughs> they are. <coughs> Onward. Okay. Well, like, I mean, that was kind of my summation of the budget. Like I said, at this point, we have the local budget built. We have the updates put in for uh, teacher steps. Um, you know, what's to be determined is what are our revenue sources. Um, and... Uh, what are some of the other big issues? You know, we're still still looking at. Um, well, I won't apply here because you have gas here, right? But I mean, we're looking at utilities, and we're looking at for Frontier. We're looking at health insurance costs, and obviously, we're looking at the transportation. So we're just trying to pull those pieces in now, so that you know, at the February meeting, we'll probably have um, those some of those larger items put in. But I mean, the big major structure of it is here in terms of salaries which is the majority of the budget and it's in for steps so then there has to be a you know a, a discussion around the potential for what is the increase in salaries that have to be built in the budget so that will get added in as well um and those would be the major components do we have any retirements that we have to think about um we we do have um which mark and i have talked about we have uh, Emma's retirement that mm -hmm. will come in this budget, is that right, Emma Linderman? Um, we have to look and see when her notice was. Right, so, but we don't have anybody retiring this year. I just wanted to bring that up before I forgot that Emma's, uh, Emma Because it was so late last year, mm -hmm. it's in this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
I have a question that's more just for clarity because I just want to understand it. Our WINGS program generates revenue. I know I, I would just want direction and flow of where the revenue goes. I know there's a SPED revolving fund, right? How much goes there? How much goes into the Conway budget itself? What is the formula? And if not now, I, that's just something I, as a committee member, want some clarity about. Well, I can get you some detail on that, but I can tell you, um, because it's a special revenue account, all the money sits in that account. Mm -hmm. So what it does is we'll offset salaries or expenses for um, that program, but it, it isn't commingled with the Conway budget because it can't be. I mean, it can offset some expenses, but mm -hmm. um, not be commingled. Okay. But I can get you some detailed expenses, you know, for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are the staff, is it a clean boundary between paraprofessionals that are Conway and paraprofessionals and teachers that are in the WINGS program? So, do you mean if we were to have a reduction, if we were to have a reduction in force, I don't know if this is answering the question. I, ju I just want to know if they're it, shared staff. I just want to say this too, just so you know, like if we were to have a reduction in force, yep. um, the WINGS instructional assistants would be part of that, those people. Do you know what I mean? They're nuts. So, like, if someone in wings has more sen let's more seniority than someone mm -hmm. uh, IA and pre K, right. they would become part of that mix. Mm -hmm. Is there shared staff? Um, wings, the wing, the IAs and wings are generally trained by the wings mm -hmm. folks and stay in the wings program. Okay. When kids are um, moved out for like a special subject inclusion or maybe math or something right. staff from the wings program goes with them mm -hmm. did i answer that yeah yeah the staff are like uh they're an extension of the wings program in the mainstream yes all right yeah okay um are we saving on oil in district wide you said we have gas here but are we saving on oil with the lo lower heating prices versus what we budgeted um I would have, I'll have to look and see what we're locked in at. So I'll take a look. We actually had a conversation with uh, Bob about that today. Mm -hmm. So, the contrast from last year. Yeah. We have a three year contract, don't we? I wouldn't think so. I'll look, but most heating contracts are only for a year. Because I think I've part most collaborative part of like a collaborative group. Yeah, it's usually the LPVEC, and they usually do one year contracts. It's usually Burke Oil out of like Bridgewater that does the mm -hmm. um, the oil. Well, I'll check in the files and get pricing. Did the warrants get signed? Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Sorry, coming up the works as usual. Yeah. So, just. Carrying on with the sub-general category, um, just the, in the budget, the salary. So you have the same placeholder for next year, 9920 that's in the budget for this year, and we're already over that for this year. Does that include the long-term, is it the long-term sub for the maternity? It shouldn't for teacher. Um, I'm not sure if it does for, i got to see who's in there. I'm not sure if it does for Kevin. Custodian? Yeah, custodian has been out. Uh, let me check we have that. a custodian that has been out for a long time. Let me see. <coughs> that came out of the... I will take a look and see. It's been out since August. Given the amount of spending that's out of that line, I would imagine it's got to be one of the long-term people. Okay, long -term. If there's too much spend, you would have had massive amount of absenteeism. Yeah. So that's the question. Yeah. That's, that's a good question when you build a budget. I mean, is this an anomaly? How do we? How much do we spend last year? Is this unusual this year? If it's not, do we need to bump it up for next year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's obviously that's the, the type of question to go through. FY eighteen actual says it was thirteen eight thirty two. Yeah, and then what do we spend out of it? So and then and then the placeholder numbers for salaries for next year are those fair game for comment or question or should we keep them 
So we negotiate in saying what the, the contracts on negotiation, so they have not been stepped up. Those are what's that's of what's that's just been brought across. So why why would phys ed be going up? Why would salary phys ed be going up by twenty percent? What page are you on for? First, First page. One. Oh, okay. I see it. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. From 53 to... Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Got a sticker next to my name. Good there question, you sticker. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that is a, a big smiley one. smiley face. Mm -hmm. Good question. Good perceptual detail there, Mr. Cantor. I mean, the... Uh, yeah. The EC teacher's line also went up. Yeah, I don't see anything. That What's did. an EC right, teacher? Right, right below. Well, from 30, set from 50 to 75. Wow. I guess a similar question would be to the librarian salary, because that doesn't reflect what's in the... Um, what's in the financial... What's in the oh, financial that's, statement that's for salary for that is a lot different than what's in the budget proposal. Is there an addition in days per week for that staff? Like going from four to five or something? Well, like the, that? the actual is what's probably been paid. No, maybe not. I was going to say paid, to, but to date, no, that wouldn't be right. Mark, can you clarify between the um, the pink all funds proposed versus the blue SE proposed? Right, so the pink all funds should be the total budget, whereas the blue should be the local budget. So it's the difference between the two is any offsets that happen in one of those green um, oh, green columns, like choice, title one. Okay, oh, like, so we can see. Like, for instance, if you look at the teacher specialist 2310, mm -hmm. the all funds is 75191. The, the local is sixty-five one ninety-one, and there's a ten thousand dollar offset from Title One. Yep. Okay. So those are those are good questions. I'll take a look at them, because um, one of the things is now when we build this budget, we have an actual salary page, and we have everybody in there with their salary, and we tie it out to this. The budget that's existing for FY nineteen that we were using, um, it has budget amounts, but it's not. There's no salary people tied to it, so it's it's difficult to do a one-to-one -one comparison. Um, so, you know, if we were here last year, I could tell you, okay, these are the people in that line, and then this year, these are the people in that line. So it's going to take a little digging to see. I mean, I could look into this and tell you who's in for this year, but I've got to do some research to see what made up last year's figure. Mm -hmm. I mean, those two we pointed out are likely one person's salary. Right. So why why the increase to that degree? Right. Anything else, Eagle Eyes? The in the, the salary lines on page three, this salary for nurse and salary for psychologist. Why wouldn't there be a um, a number in FY eighteen actual and a number in FY nineteen budget for those line items? They all of a sudden appear fresh and new for twenty. That have been the retirement in some way? That's a good question. Unless they were classed differently yeah. last year. Same thing with salary for custodian. Nurse. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nurse, psychologist. And custodial. So the thing about this is that the real numbers are going to be higher. Mm -hmm. So this might look really attractive to somebody comparing it with the actual budget that we're submitting for mm -hmm. approval in, in a couple months. So um, don't let it out. Of yeah, your sight. yeah, 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 yeah. 
Well, <coughs> I mean, it doesn't have the pay. Doesn't have we don't have a negotiated number for where it's going to be pay increases, right. so it's not even showing that. And that's the biggest part of it. Right. So, you know, I think the one of the main um, things we wanted to get through the first part of the budget is: is there any major changes in program costs? Are there any adjustments to the program? And you know, it's nice to say that Conway's is very boring in the sense that you're not adding a teacher for an increase in student numbers. You're not, you know, those kind of things. Um, and Kristen, is there anything else that um, that's there's any major programming changes in your budget? No, I had requested um, a special ed teacher because you just do a wish list at the beginning, um, knowing you know that that's a wish a wish list. But no, there aren't any major program changes. Right, and so we're, we're not looking for huge bumps for technology or huge bumps for any of those other kind of no. things. So. It really is bringing over a <clears throat> um, level programming, you know, and then you know, the budget to match that. So, so it is kind of boring at this stage. And then when we, the plan is that they're going to the building of this system is that they're all kind of in, the pages are all connected, and that we'll be able to very for the next month when we have all the information coming in, it should be plugged in, and that'll be all there. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No. Good. I like the format of your report. Good report. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. But I think what's helpful is, you know, just seeing the funding because that's one of the problematic yeah, things. Yeah. You know there's this other stuff that gets paid for elsewhere, and it's just so much easier if you lay it out in, yeah. in one summary page. Yeah. And I will get the answers to your questions. Very good questions. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we're done with financial statements and we're signing the warrants. Right, Phil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Sign the warrants. <laughs> Are you, do you take the warrants? No, you don't. Right. Take All right. the warrants. So, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, public comment? No? No? Okay. I guess I'm the public. The public. Nope. It's good to have public. Great. Right. Unfinished business. Update on water tank. I've been dying to hear. Dying of thirst. <laughs> I'm staying for this one. <laughs> 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 you got to know how it ends, right? It's like a, a soap opera, and it's going to continue. Um, Kristen, do I give you? Want me to give it? Want me to give it, and then you provide color? Sure. That's, yeah. Okay. Um, so. Good cop, bad I'm trying, cop. I'm trying to remember where we left off with this. Replacing the tank over okay, Christmas. Okay, oh, Christmas, it's Christmas. Detailed Christmas. schedule Gross. over the break, day by day, Ooh, mapped horror. out. All Christmas is going to be well. We're going to open up with the <clears throat> freshly uh -oh. lined tank. Yep. Uh -oh. That's not what happened. <laughs> what? Why are you saying uh oh? Because See, that's what their, that's what their expectation is. Remember. <laughs> so, um, She's like, darn, they actually felt they paid went, attention. They went into the tank after they drained it and such and found that the bladder, the not the bladder, but the, the sealant, that water had gotten behind it. And thus, that is what has caused the continual water got through. That means water was going back and forth through it. So um, they decided to pull the whole, clean the whole thing out and not put a new sealant in because there wasn't enough time. Mm. And so this brings us back to how the tank was before we put the sealant in. Mm -hmm. So they said when, so, okay. This is before my time. Um, <laughs> so what they did is it, it, the tank was due for maintenance to be cleaned on the inside out. And so it was recommended that when you go in and clean it out, that you put a sealant in um, basically so to seal the, the where it's basically a cement tank with a, with a coating to, you know, to stop any things mm -hmm. from going through. Um, that's a, the new recommendation. So when we went in to clean the tank, that's what we did. And that's when we started to have a chemical type stuff. And it's because they pr the sealant did not properly adhere, water got behind it, that caused everything. So we went back in to replace all that and they realized it was a more of a mess than could be done in that time frame. So they just took it all out. And so we are at a tank that was before summer, um, and so there, there was a debate out there whether or not the sealant was ever necessary to begin with. 
I'll leave that to the water tank experts as they're still kind of going back and forth and now planning on doing it in the summer. So the water, we they remove the liner, they're going back to the old... Um, no liner, no sealant. No, no liner, no sealant. Um, they did Which testing on really it, testing came back, absolutely perfect. Water tastes great. And the water is, you know, back to where it was prior to us putting that sealant in. So, there could be some people at home, this is where the, the viewers at home are doing the epic eye oil. Really, is this where we got? Um, but this is, again, where, with the recommendations of the, I don't know where, you know, the state recommending what you're supposed to do um, in maintaining these wells. So that's kind of where we're at. So now we are in the planning stage for summer um, to go back in, dry it out, and you basically do it over again. What does this all cost us, dude? So far, nothing, because we haven't paid the bill. Ah, okay. Well, I was so I didn't see that in any of the budget documents at all. The bottle, any bottled water cost, any water testing cost, any water testing consultant costs. So where this gets a little bit more difficult, and I don't know where, and I don't want to step on um, Tom's toes on this, but the town has taken is is on is the one having leading the conversation with the vendors on that. So. They, maybe they've already cleaned this all up and they just haven't told me yet, um, which wouldn't be unheard of. Um, but it is in their court. It's not in my court on that right now. Yeah, the, the town didn't. For, the town hall did not furnish bottled water, though. No, we did. We did. So. And so there was talk about getting reimbursement for that bottled water. So. Yeah. So there's, the good news is there's no possibility that that's going to be like a really unpleasant five-figure su surprise or anything like that, right? I mean, we're talking about modest numbers, I would hope. He's trying to get you on the tape, saying. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> on what I the mean, bottled water? Well, the, uh, well, the, they were the, all golden containers. Yeah. No, no like that that this isn't going to be just um, that everything that we're talking about potentially being added to the budget, the, the worst case scenario still isn't that bad, right? <laughs> I, uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I hadn't been really keeping track of the number of cases that came through. I can ask Mary DeLusa um, and get you an idea for the next meeting. Do you want to okay. So what I will do is I will get an update also and um, I'll email it to you guys prior to me so you can get it before. Update of where the whole water you know, position stands. Um, we can also talk with Tom and see where things are at there. Or, uh, but there was still a lot of going back and forth about, because there came the argument, is, well, do we have to do it at all at this point? The water's right. quality at this point, it's been tested as quality, so we have to go back now. And, and so that's kind of was the um, more recent back and forth. Right. And so now it's, you know, I think we get that. So, and, and I will say, our town administrator feels that we have all of the leverage in this argument versus vis-a-vis uh, -vis the vendor, um, that because we have not paid, the town has not paid them, and so that is apparently quite the sort of Damocles to be hanging over their their head and making sure that uh, their work is satisfactory before they get paid. So I'm curious if, if, the, if the lining is moving forward. Am I correct in saying that? It's going to start like two days after school gets out and we'll close the school for four weeks to allow for drying time and curing time, right? That's correct. So we were already planning to have summer programs not be in this right. building. Right. And I was meeting as I get there. Sealant's a recommendation, not a requirement? Yeah. I will get the, I'll get the exact, I've already been quoted saying something, but yeah. um, I will um, find out it was, it was, I'll have to find out was required or highly recommended when you had it open to put the sealant in. And you can, in hindsight, yeah, right. sure, you got it open, you got to do it, get the sealant right. with the best quality. It's going to, sure. yeah, and if you know, and then, you. Sure. and then all of a sudden you have the problem, and someone says, Why did you do that? And you're right. like, Well, mm -hmm. you know, had we known this was going to happen, we right. clearly right. would have, right. if it was an optional, we would have protested more. If it wasn't optional, then, yep. oh. and so you can kind of see how we got there. But. Okay. Even though the bottled water seems like a little thing, it, we wouldn't have had that cost otherwise, yep. right. you know, so right. if the job was done right or, you know, whatever. So it seems little, but with every school budget, there's so little wiggle room that, you know, if it's 
a thousand bucks. That's a thousand mm. bucks you could use for something else. So, yeah. all righty. Um, on to new business. It looks like <coughs> substitute pay increase. I heard that on the radio. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> Head <is on. laughs> all right. Yeah. So um, on January first, the the state of Massachusetts has um, the state of Massachusetts had a uh, raised the minimum wage um, to twelve dollars, and our current day rate, as set for um, Conway, is for six and a half hours, and it falls just below minimum wage for the day rate as a sub. So, um, it is my recommendation that we. Um, vote to make it eighty dollars an hour, which is increasing it a day. A day, rather. Thank you. <laughs> I want something yeah. right. <laughs> There's a <laughs> line out the door tomorrow. Um, we want a shortage of subs. Anyway. There you go. Um, eighty dollars a day um, moving forward. And the one correction from what originally was said, municipalities are not required to follow this uh, mandate by the state. So, um, the minimum wage? The minimum wage. Because one would say it's on under the mandate. Um, if there was argument about that at the Frontier meeting, so I, oh, I called sure. the attorney and um, they, Frontier did raise the rate, but there was, of course, a um, question of. Let me guess. You can guess what that was. The gentleman who brought that up. Uh, keep an eye on the state. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so, you know, I think it's appropriate that we pay our subs above minimum wage for their work here. Um, it is something to look at, as I explained to other committees, that, um, that Massachusetts is looking at raising minimum wage up to $15 by 2023. Wow. Um, so next year it's going up by 75 cents more. It's be 12.75 by January 1st of next year, which will cause us again to make the raise. So we have to look at it in our budget um, to increase. Um, and then it also, um, I'll be bringing it to the joint meeting, whether or not I don't like how when we move these kind of things through, you guys are the last group to vote. So good luck not voting the $80. Right. You know what I mean? It's kind of puts you in a weird spot. So those are some of the things that really should happen at the joint meetings where if you're making a vote where you you know, you can't pick committee against committees or subs versus subs or that kind of thing, it's, it, it's best to, if we get together and, and make those decisions. But should we make the jump in pay to start the school year off rather than waiting for the January date and then budget for it appropriately? So. Um, you know, I have to get the numbers together for that, to do that part, but mm -hmm. it would kind of make sense um, moving through. This also, as I said to other committees, um, it also put in line um, the tech school spends over $80 an hour on subs, Gilmani spends over $80 an hour on subs, and um, what was the last one? Were they doing that Smith? before yeah. this change? No. But I, I, whatever. So there's, it puts us also at eighty dollars. It puts us with competitive to other schools in Franklin County. There was a survey that went around that caused, you know, hey, this is coming, and so that's what brought to my attention in December, and says, oh, we got to get this, we got to get this going. Um, some of them didn't fill out the form, but I imagine. Um, Do I you imagine have trouble getting them. subs? Oh yeah. yes, we. And that you know, for for wasn't it for like a decade we were the l least paying, we were the, the lowest paying district in the county for for many years. I know yeah. that we were we were stuck at sixty five when everybody else had gone north of seventy. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, kids. And I was told that that had a that 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 there are subs that would p try to go to any place else besides right. our, our district. Our kids are generally better behaved. Yeah. So, so 65 I mean, versus 85 they stay, for a day's work. Sometimes they think we're too far or too, but yeah, I had a teacher out to, it was a couple of people out today with that neural virus. And so I had a classroom teacher and our staff is so great. I just sent an email out at like six. I said, can any, are any teachers willing to rotate through to give this class cover? And just about every teacher gave like, 45 minutes of their prep time or lunch time or whatever awesome. to cover um, this particular class. So um, I think that is just such a low rate to get anybody competent besides a body. I mean, I mean that's just awful. Got to pay minimum wage. I mean, <clears throat> at a minimum. <laughs> So well, I think you've yeah. got to pay more than that. Yeah, You're someone who a was a sub in 1999, which is 
about 20 years ago, and I could tell you what I made then. It would, it's not much of an increase in the last 20 years. So, so by your logic, we could offer a little bit more than 80. And, I think we should. And we could poach the poach the best That's subs from our think. neighboring districts. Just well, we should put it in the budget for next year. So <laughs> pay a hundred bucks a day or something. Twenty bucks more, but that might get. I mean, it, you know, it does add up. But um, do long-term subs get any more than short-term stuff? Like yes. Okay. So after 10 days, they go to um, step one of the teacher's contract. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> usually, the, the, one of the major differences also, at that point, they're taking on the role of a full teacher. Yeah. Meaning they're, not only not are they, not, they're not just showing up and taking lesson plan off the desk. They <clears throat> are doing lesson plans. They're you know, dealing yeah. with more than just coverage of a single day yeah. coverage, which is. You are, you're you're required to have at least a bachelor's degree in order to apply as a sub, am I correct? And that is not correct. That's no. not correct? No. Oh. Okay. So, um, it's obviously it's recommended, but we also um, will take college students. We usually ask for one year, yep. it's happened. Uh, more than one year out of college. Uh, um, one, one, one year of college, right. if you're currently attending college, we usually say, well, yeah, in your second year, come, come back to a sub, I think. Um, and here with the little kids, we we are good taking you in one year. You yeah. know, kids so when kids come home from break, yeah. They, yeah. you'll see them. Um, not kids, the young adults coming home from college. Yeah. Um, the kids when I watch them walk across stage, but yes, yeah. you know. So, um, but yeah, we we take advantage of them as well. Is that the same with the, at the high school? Yeah, for the high school, we we agree, say we make them wait one year. Right. So just so you know, nineteen and you're subbing. That's you don't want to substitute yeah. your your prom date. Right. You know That's I mean? pretty so. tricky. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's funny. Could be awkward. <laughs> Go to the office. Or the dumped, dumped prom date. Yeah. All righty. Something to keep an eye on. Do we have, are we ready to vote on that? Oh, yeah. We do need to vote. Uh, can I have a motion? A motion to raise the sub pay to $80 a day. Second? Yes. All, second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, review of 2018 NESDEC enrollment report. So, um, you know, that was sent to me from, we are a member of NESDEC. Mm -hmm. And, you know, NESDEC um, is historically wrong about their enrollment projections. Correct. But, um, they've but they're been. Still they, they're still in business. They're still in Well, so, you know. Predicting population and population trends is not, I was going to say it's not a science, but it probably is. Yeah, it probably um, is. But, probably you know, is. they've been, they, we've seen projections that were wrong, and I kind of quoted, been quoted on the other, you know, when Frontier did its renovation in 98, they said that Frontier was projected to be over 1,000 students in <coughs> how many years, and they never got above 800. So I think close to 800 is where they maxed before they came down again. So it's one of those things where, you know, trending forward. I, I think that it is interesting to look at, you know, um, I don't know what page this is. The page with the, if you have it, the page with the light blue, mm -hmm. this kind of graph. But we start looking at the number of births that are happening in um, Conway and projected births. You know, you're, the, more recently it's getting under 10. Yeah. And so... Um, you know, I, I, I mean, I just jotted some notes that um, oh, they're right here. Um, just you know, things that we'll be looking at is less than 12 births a year. Um, you know, we've been off balancing that with choice in. You know, with less births, and then some of the choice out numbers. You know, it's just a number we have to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. um, in 09, there were um, 141 students um, pre-K through, and in 19, there's 91. So that's a significant population drop. That doesn't include the school choice students. So, um, you know, it's a one school, one class per grade school. You know, um, right. as long as we can choice numbers to keep those in the teens, we have a healthy number. It's, right. you know, we start getting, you know, that we'd have to have heavier conversations if it got lower than that. But mm -hmm. you never know. I mean, it's a small town like this. You get a family of five, move in, all of a sudden your numbers get thrown off by whatever. Right. And, and, you know, that, you know, not one family of five, but a couple, you know, that right. kind of thing. You really just sh shoot things off. So, I have family so I, a family told me on Tuesday 
that they were having a baby and I just gave um, the parent that told me the biggest bear hug and then this afternoon another parent told me that they were, might be having twins and I so, just gave a double bear hug. All right, so there's three birds not counted on this thing. So you know what, the whole thing is running out of but it, So it's just something to look at. It's the only reason I brought it to your attention is it's, it's given to me, it's good information to kind of, yeah. you know, when people are talking about population trends and stuff, if we're not t watching them. You know, we're not doing that Our raw population is increasing and has increased for the past few years. Yeah. And this might be the first year the census shows that we're over 2,000 residents for the first time since 1810. And, um, really? And last year, we, last year. Are they of age of making families? Lots of Thoreau oh, back yeah. to the land, folks. Yeah. Um, last, <laughs> last year, we had more. Uh, uh, What's the permit that you got to pull to build a house? Building permit. Building permit. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Building and house permit. Well, time. I thought that was a trick. Last, last year, the town issued more building permits than it had in 20 years. Just, and, um, really? Where? Yeah. I don't see that. I don't know, but there's eight, eight building permits issued last year. Building permits. Can we get a hold of that census for us? That would be really helpful. Can we get a hold of that? Yes. So we can see how many. Five year olds, you can. Um, sure. I mean, technically, no is supposed to have been pulled from whatever the formal census is, but yeah, yeah, it's. Wait, and like they're the group that that's blamed for uh, the debt. You really, when you look at what uh, what the district's pro the oversized schools. I mean, Sunderland would have never been built out to the extent that it was if not for. I know, project. but Sunderland's population is growing. Well, well but Sunderland right now, look at, they're at a classroom space. Look at the um, Buckman Shelburne building. Look at the um, the Ashfield building. Look at all these buildings that were built to because they were projected to uh, have increasing enrollment from now until the end of time, twenty years ago. And well, if people were smart enough to move to the hill towns, they would be, but people just are not smart enough to move to the hill towns, and that's just fine. <laughs> then we can stay. Yeah. Hey, so anyways, it was yeah. just food for thought, no, nothing other than that. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. We already did our budget proposal. Reports. So the, the capital projects um, report that kind of goes into, I just want to make sure I'm clear from the committee that we are not doing any warrants to the town and any capital projects that we're going to use this year, we're going to take from the um, capital stabilization. capitalization account. Yeah. Okay. I just want, yeah. we never really kind of, we talked about it, but we never, you know, maybe we did formally say it, but I'm just saying that for it because I, if I'm wrong, the due dates to get those in is this month. So, um, well, so. do you think that like that fund is there for a future, you know, furnace, boiler, whatever? But you know, are we going to need a new well at some point? I, like, I have some information on that. Okay. Um, so the that that fund is at the the capital stabilization fund for our school is at two six two six eight. Two six eight, two hundred sixty eight. Boy, 000. we're done well, haven't we? And um, the this year, the last time that this came up, um, I said that this year maybe we we'll, we won't request anything new, a new addition to capital estate because um, the bond. This is the bond year for the frontier building renovation. That was thinking that that assessment for this year would be like sixty thousand, but that assessment for this year is thirty something thousand. So um, when I went over those numbers with the town administrator, um, he it suggested that we once again ask for another 25000 in new investment, in, uh, 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 request an, a new addition to the capital stabilization fund of 25000 which would make up, which would be more or less even with the uh, withdrawals from that fund that we seek to make with the capital projects. Mm -hmm. So uh, it should be a wash, is what I'm trying to say. If we put but in, but still put money in the capital. We're, still, we're going to put 25 in. We're going to take the like, 25 out, and uh, that seems to be the way it looks. And the reason is because the town. Why would you put it in and take it out? Not just. Um, Can you do it that way? 
You can. I mean, it wouldn't be a, a zero. It wouldn't be a precise zero zero offset, but because um, the, the plan is to do a couple of carpets, right? A couple of classroom carpets was on. It was on your list of. Yeah. One got done. Classroom, but yeah, we. And Darius and I were talking. We still have money from the warrants from last year and the year before that we haven't spent. Remember last year we had that list like hand dryers and flowers yeah. and stuff. We haven't spent all that money yet. I, I got, Darius and I got an update from Jan Warner for the money left from last year and the year before on those warrants. Um, Are we getting hand dryers? Um, we paid for The town paid for them. The town paid for them, yeah. I remember um, last year when we did the security system, we had a whole list of things. Yeah. There's some things on that list that we haven't done yet, so mm -hmm. there's still money in there. Um, I don't know what the rules are about changing. You can't change a thing. If you, you don't spend it. it for that exact precise thing that's listed in the warrant, like with no additions or subtractions. Right. So, so like for example, there was four thousand for floor, right? So, the fifth grade I came to approximately twenty-five thousand. So we could use the other fifteen thousand toward another floor. We were hoping to do. We were hoping to do several classrooms, like each year, or whatever, with the flooring. We need to. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we could you could we could approach this different ways. We could you could give the money back to town and ask the money back again with different projects. And the one thing about that is it just shows that there's you don't want to have any transparency. kind of transparency. You don't want to mistrust that oh we gave you money and then you didn't spend it all and then you're gonna spend it on this. Instead, it says okay we have this much left over for flooring. We're gonna give it back, and then we're going to ask for the next season of flooring, which is going to cost. You know, we're talking mm -hmm. it's about five to six thousand per room. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we're going to do two rooms next year, so we're going to have twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Although we're giving you money back, you know, they want they're going to want us. They're not. Mm -hmm. I'm going to imagine they don't want us just to hold on to yeah. it as a kitty and go through, you know, like projects. They want to mm -hmm. they want to see their tax dollars at work, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Would be my again. Mm -hmm. This is your going to be your call as a committee how you want to do that. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we probably for on. the next meeting should. Get a full update of where we're at on those, what they were approved for, because we were trying to. So, so are the hand dryers just, stuck somewhere? Like, so Article Nine on May 2018 warrant was for capital expenses for Conway Grammar School in the amount of twenty-four thousand. None of that has been spent. There's also a fourteen thousand three hundred eleven dollars and eighty cents from the prior year's article. I'm guessing that one was from May 2017, Article Number Eight. It was initially for thirty-five thousand. That's the one we did that had the security system and the hand dryer. Because remember, that was thirty-five thousand. So it sounds like from one warrant we have twenty-four thousand, from the other fourteen thousand three hundred, so thirty-eight thousand something that we have on those warrants. But it's for specific specific things. Yeah. So if you had if you have savings, which very much is the case with Bob Lesko, is that. The one thing yeah, he does do is he, much, right. he, you know, bids anything for. T he says he needs ten thousand dollars and spends six, mm -hmm. and then end up giving the money back. So you know, he always has the, yeah. you know, especially thing with security and stuff. So we have to make sure you have to go through the line and, like, we know you don't have hand dryers. Um, you know, what are those things that are still on the list that have they, can have still bid, be done? Have bids been gotten for hand dryers, or is that stuck somewhere, Kristen? Um, not yet. They haven't. Is that stuck with Bob? Like, does Bob get those bids? Um, he goes from Bob. Patty had, oh. Patty told me to wait on those. Naturally. Are you waiting for Patty? To <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you waiting for Patty to stop telling you to wait? <laughs> you don't have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, you definitely right. want those, you know, could cut down on your paper considerably. Yeah, right, right. And Bob, Bob Lesko had this three-color, multi-page thing that had all of our immediate needs, all of our yep. medium-term needs, and all of our long-term needs, and uh, uh, built out years in advance when whatever. So we were following a program. Well, I would but also kick some of that to the safety committee if there's still security-related things right, we were with talking money in the budget that they think we should have that we don't have. Right. We were talking, that's a great idea, we are talking about key fobs today at the um, mm -hmm. safety committee meeting uh, as a possibility, too. Right. And I would, again, 
suggest that if that is from two years ago warrants, that you give back the money and take it back, and then ask for it back again. Yeah, and just so that they, you know, because it's fine. not. It, I just, I don't. Again, I don't know. Yeah. you guys have been. You guys know the town Conway's politics better than I do, but they probably would like to see that, don't you think? If you haven't like spent it for town? a specific <laughs> purpose and you're going to be asking for that same exact specific purpose. They it's a little bit different if you were saying replacing carpet, and we got another carpet to replace. I think someone say well, that's a hand for hand. But when we initially did, if you're looking for a different kind of project, when you talk about school security, well, that's for us to decide. So what I'll do is I'll get a list of this, and we can decide exactly how we want to. We'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting, and we'll we'll do exactly how we'll go through what we have, and then come up with a game plan of how we approach it. So we'll get the exact numbers of what has and has been done. Um, what is leftover money from savings? We say leftover. We, we can call it leftover. We also call it savings, um, and then decide, you know, what we're going to do giving right. back. What projects we have to complete, and then looking at is there anything how we want to approach the the warrant article is if you're going to put money into stabilization, or also, for example, I know we want to do more classroom mm -hmm. carpets and, um, you know, just the. When I talk about classroom carpets, just the and mm -hmm. you know refurbishing a couple of classrooms that have been over ten yeah. years old of wear and tear on carpets. Right. So um, we can see what are the how key much money. for? <clears throat> so the there are other right now Frontier and Deerfield are in the middle of a key fob project where basically replacing keys and codes with a fob system, which basically is you know a scan card. Um, the nice thing about it is. Um, you can make you can manage someone's access to the building at any time. Right. So um, let's say let's say Phil plays basketball here, and somehow he's got the key code to this building. Right. Okay. Phil can't come in the the school at ten o'clock in the morning with the right. key code because the key fob you can program what time that people are allowed in. Right. Or let's say. Phil, we no longer want Phil in this building. <laughs> right. Yeah. These are all possibilities. Yeah. Okay. All and, <laughs> um, <laughs> and we can't find key, we can't find Phil to get the key back. We can just shut him off, and he right. can no longer have access to the building. Cut him off. I think I so. still have a key to Frontier. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> she can be shut off. Soon. So, but that's I have to again. That's the locks but, have that, changed. but that's the but that is the that is the the idea with you know, this has been talked about the frontier is that through the years the amount of coaches rec leagues keys you know you give a key for a weekend you forget to get it back and then all you know how many are out there that kind of thing and now we have security cameras and that kind of thing for access um, you know so we haven't had you know thefts or vandalism and that kind of stuff right. but. Um, the general security during the day. So yeah. Frontier in Deerfields are getting those done. You know, basically the bids are out right now, um, and so we're hopefully I'm hoping by early spring. But I was hoping mm -hmm. by middle of the year before right. when I was hoping um, to get when we get that done. So we'll have an idea of how much it is. It won't be that much. Very expensive for something for Conway to do. Yeah, because it has to do with the number of doors and connecting the doors to a, a single system. So. Frontier um, will be a nightmare. That's a lot of doors. It's a lot of doors and a lot of different types of access, um, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah. um, but again, that might be worth it, Kristen. Yeah. You, you, did you do you have a general idea, Darius? Like what, how much it costs per door? Yeah. I think you're you're talking a couple thousand per door. Oh. And if you're, the way your doors are hardware, which I can see right now, they're they're good hardware compared to Deerfield and Frontier, which just had unique. The crash bars are unique. We can't put a system on. Um, it has to do with the number of, you know, okay. you know, number of spots, and then, and then I think you have to pay for depending on how you're going to house the, the brains of the operation, mm -hmm. whether it goes on the internet or whether or not you have your own system. Yeah. You know. Um, that but, would be good for here because it's very much a community school. Right. But something like that, you would have to yeah. you would have to put in a new warrant. That's a new that's right. a new right. expenditure. Right. But um, if if it's if anything, if, any, if it's anything on those, if it's any, if I, I don't know that we're bound to spend that money within that <coughs> year, within the calendar year that it's approved. I think if if you I, I, not if Jan says it's still there. I, I mean, I think if you still have that item outstanding and you still intend to do it, I, I would say you know if you don't have to give it back and ask for it again, don't. I don't think that that. I mean, simplify your life. I think people give you. You want to make people happy. Keep them at town meaning the least amount of time that you can. 
um, yeah. and just do what, do what you need to do. Um, I have the list from the 35,000 Darius. I can give that to you. I, I don't know if I was, I don't know. We'll get to go. We do sometimes have the impression that projects go slowly here in Conway because you know we're so far and, from yeah. the hub of I don't, things. I don't want to be the one standing. We drop down on the list of priorities, and Kristen's not a complainer. <clears throat> and so. I don't want to be—I don't want to be the one standing up at town meeting saying we didn't do it because Patty said hold off. Okay. Yeah, I, don't, I do remember I, that, but I, I can't I remember, don't remember why. That. There were just so many projects on the docket that um, we had. We had to prioritize our, the And industry. our water tank yeah. issue has chewed up massive amounts of time, too. Yeah. And that, it's just... Yes. How yeah. many bathrooms in this building? Installing hand dryers would be an afternoon project. Like, it would not be yeah. a big deal. And the, the paper that it would save. And, and partition. The, there was partition. For partitions, in the, there was bathroom partition as well, I think. One or two. Yeah, we those are an immediate fix, actually, now. Um, the boys' bathroom, as you've seen, yeah. Well, I guess we're saying go ahead with the hand drives. Yeah. Well, go ahead with every go ahead with everything that is funded and asked for, and uh, start start putting the okay. pressure on. We'll do. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you got to jump up and down, otherwise you're going to be way down. Start putting pressure system. on Patty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Darius. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bob, right. let's go. You will get that going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Darius, you want to go first, or Kristen, you want to go first? Who wants to go first? Oh, I'm sorry. Where are we? Okay, so committee. I'll go first because it's not ready. Okay. Um, <laughs> guys, it's been a while since you guys are the last meeting of the month, so it's yeah. like I've been through it a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. Some of you have already seen this, but um, Christian Lane has um, all the files have been moved to Frontier. As you know, that's been an ongoing project. That had to be a mess. It, it was a mess, um, and it's not cleaned up. And we saved the original plan on that um, was going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars because they were going to do a lot of digitizing. You know, I was able to find space at Frontier. The staff really wasn't thrilled about digitizing records that, um, <laughs> that they have a system of going back through them. And if we had the space to do it, I said, we'll save the money. Staff wasn't dying to do it. So, you know, we actually saved quite a bit there. Um, and now the sale is almost complete as well. Um, you know, Phil actually was just talking about he has to get down there to sign off on that. Um, so that'll be happening in the next couple weeks or so as well. But that's really in the hands of the attorneys at this point. We've done everything we're supposed to do. Um, negotiations are underway. Um, you will also find on your agenda that we have the ability to go to executive session, discuss how negotiations are going anytime you wish. Okay, right now we've just done the meet and greet and setting up of the ground rules and um, setting the schedule moving forward so that I don't have a ton I'm not recommending we go to a negotiation okay. to an executive session. If you want to just to talk about things, we certainly can, um, but you have nothing formal to report. So okay. I also I have both of them going there just so you can kind of see that, um, you know, Frontier is also going at the same time. What one am I on? What one are you on? 38. You're on 38. I'm on 38. Because if you're at Frontier, I would have saw you before this. Because we, okay. we, uh, we just had meetings. Yeah, that morning. would be a really good thing. Okay. We were going to do um, teachers. I was going to do powers, but like... The problem is it's the same time, the same night. So you're yeah, not saving nights. Do you want, do you want to do, is it kosher to split the days? You know, um, or would that be a discontinuity if Elaine is sitting in on teacher in Paris and I'm sitting on teacher in Paris on a, di uh. on a different day? Is there a precedent for that? Yeah, yes. Sunderland did it last time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm doing teachers. You're doing Paris. Well, they're the same day. We would do both on different days okay. and have to be brought up to speed, um, that kind of thing. Um, I could do Thursdays and on Wednesdays, you know. It's a, you know, it's a... It's Sunderland a, did that last year. Yeah, it's okay. a larger, comparatively speaking, it's a larger committee. Cause it's a, it's an eight, it's an eight member mm -hmm. committee, not including council and myself. So, um, you know, it's... One of those things, if you are trading off, there's mm -hmm. there's still plenty of other continuity mm -hmm. amongst the other members and yeah. and Phil. So you're continuity. doing frontier? No, he's doing union. Um, no, I stepped out of that. Thank goodness. Um, oh, who's doing Cindy? Frontier? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Good. Okay. The next thing on the list was the 
the bids did go out for um, a business service, um, and TMS was the only bid. And they are it's the, the same rate they had us for the first half of the year, so um, it was um, easy to award them the second half. Um, and then at the joint meeting on Tuesday, we'll discuss what we want to do for a business manager um, for next year. So, are they the only game in town? Yes. Interesting. Only game that does that provide that kind of service. Oh, okay. um, for a stopgap situation. I think there might be another one in Eastern Mass, but they don't you know okay. what the one that's serving Western Mass. Um, and then the one that's not on there is the bus contract. Um, I'm hoping to have it posted for tomorrow. January 22nd. That's this week, right? Tuesday. 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 Everybody be there, be square. Okay. That's going to be a long meeting, I bet. No. What time is that? No. Six. Six the, the, yeah, so please note for the, the upcoming negotiations, the 23rd is team strategies. When I, every time I use the word team, it's just, it's just the school side meeting with the attorney to go through um, looking at the different, what the different asks are, what we can expect, and, you know, talking about budgets and, you know, strategizing. So, um, and then the following meeting will be first round of proposals. So the 23rd is Wednesday. Okay. All righty. Okay. So on to you, Kristen. Um, so we had a great transition back to the new year. Sometimes when the kids have that period of time off, we see some, you know, um, a dip in reading or math and we have to do some review and we we're ready to roll right back on the first grade the first day climate is great i mean it, it's just it's it's really a great school and you walk around and the kids are on task and teachers are working hard and i don't know sometimes the transition back after the december break is tough and i thought it was worth noting i've never had a school where you come back and day one hour one everyone's back to work and, and engaged um, our school council met in January to review the school improvement plan. We created a diversity committee uh, to research different opportunities to, to expose students to diversity. That's something we're always trying to work on, but now we've established a, a formal committee. Um, staff observations are in full swing as, as well as data collection in terms of strategies for pedagogy and instruction. Um, our students are, begin are taking the NEWA currently. Um, I said I was going to have some results for the January meeting, thinking, I don't know what I was thinking, but anyway, <laughs> I'll have them for the February meeting. Um, but again, the staff is great. You know, one teacher has already given them, and before any formal meeting or anything, she's over with the reading specialist talking about a couple of students that might need some intervention. So this, I mean, we have a really smart staff. Um, yeah, on the ball. Professional Development Committee has been great. They're not only planning um, our professional development days, but also working on the staff meetings. Blue Cross Blue Shield will be offering, and then I'm a kid. I'm, something must have happened. I must have had a phone call or something. Um, so Blue Cross Blue Shield, we've opened up a, like a whole. It's one of those where like the teacher gives a worksheet but doesn't give you all the notes, so right. you have to pay attention. So if you give them everything, you give them right. something that they write in. Kind of. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> School committee and superintendent report. Um, and I did it on a Sunday too, so I don't know what. Uh, so anyhow, Blue Cross Blue Shield has a lot to offer to employers, um, employees. So we're having them come in to do a workshop, Work and Life Balance, which is great in January. They offer different classes. They offer, offer um, incentives. So our wellness committee has really tapped into that. And I'm going to report to each, each month just so you, I mean, and these are free services. I've shared this with other principals as well. They have a whole list of workshops that they'll come in and do. And we thought this isn't, even though it isn't professional development, we thought that it was really timely in January to do this. I, miss, I missed the, who is it? Blue Cross Blue Shield. Oh, Blue Cross. Yeah. Being sure. Um, so this is going to be work and life balance, which actually is important um, in the field of education in every field. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be really interested to see how this Preventive works. care lowers medical utilization. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, our crisis team continues to meet to update the procedure and plan safety drills. Um, we've already done lockdown drill this year. Our two out of four required fire drills. We had um, a medical emergency the other day. Um, all is fine, but the response from the medical response team outside of school and here in school was great. Um, I can give you more information if you want that after the meeting. Um, just due to confidentiality, one-on-one -on -one if anyone mm -hmm. wants to. We have a kindergarten literacy tea coming up um, at the end of January. Kindergarten registrations, family ha families have been kick picking up kindergarten registrations over the past week. Um, I would say right now, just informally, not having received any back yet, we have nine um, right now. Nine so, homegrown? Um, so six coming out of preschool, not all homegrown. Okay. Um, two homegrown and one school choice still. Okay. I have to get some, we have to get something out. Do, what do we do, do we do an announcement about school choice in the newspaper or? I forgot how that works. Do I do that? Well, the committee will have to make a decision if it's going to be a choice school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot about I mean, about it's usually that. a... Sorry. It's a, you know, it's whatever. That. Once you're in the game, you can't leave the game. It's like so. brain freeze, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you would, you know, you yeah. can... Yeah, right. Decide if you want to advertise or not, depending, yeah. on, depending on your... It was a total brain freeze. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We got you covered. Okay, so that's that. Okay. Can I ask a question about the uh, diversity committee? Yeah. Is that made up from people that are on the school council, or is that... Um, Another committee. Like something that they're reaching out to bring more Yeah, people. right. So um, it's people on the school council, and um, we're going to be reaching out. We're going to be doing parent surveys and um, parent input. And that's a good question, Michael. We did a subcommittee within the school council hmm. for this committee. I was literally thinking tonight on my way home after work about... Um, is there a curriculum that helps kids meet other kids from like other countries that mm -hmm. a lot like real real diversity like yes, really so understanding like that programs, there's other cultures and right stuff. There's well i mean like really connecting with real kids like understanding perspectives yeah. like a media link or yeah. something like I that know. that was just yeah. that was in my mind as i drove home from work today yeah it's one of our one of our um tasks is to figure that out Okay. Yeah. For like 20 years, we had a partner with a small town in Mexico, and they sixth grade did two week field trips <laughs> to to a tiny village in Mexico and lived with home families there. That was a Tony and Ann Borden. That was gone before I got here, though. It was gone after September 11th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I was here September 11th. Well, I'm glad yeah. that it's starting, and I was curious, right. kind of the scope of it and what its yeah. goals were. So. This is going to be a year of investigating. Cool. Um, Bring that back. Tony would like to see it. Although, yeah. I don't know how you're going to get over that wall. <laughs> uh, well, and I'm surprised nobody, nobody in this town it does, you know, I couldn't. Uh, it was a, I was set up. And I'm surprised nobody in this town sponsors refugee, family, whatever. It's, we, a good way to get diversity would be to sponsor some refugee, family. That's yes, true. But there's nobody in town doing that. And, and that um, for the Niwa, the grades three through six, is that possibly is that the Title One funds that pays for, no, the, so for that's the a interventions test. and stuff? It is ELA and math tests that students in grade three through six take. They do it in the fall, right. January, and then in um, the spring. And right. I love the January one because right then you can see yeah the growth where we need more interventions, where... Um, so it's a tier two, like the, kind of, you're looking at the general ed population and seeing if there's any mm -hmm. response to intervention level two need. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our kids are accessing the curriculum the way they should be. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's a great dipstick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's pretty, it's a, it's the te the one assessment that I've seen that's pretty consistent with the MCAS. Hmm. Well, because of Clayton's knee was and his MCAS, he got to be placed in an advanced math class in yeah. school in right. his hmm. seventh grade. Right. Because they value right. those. Mm -hmm. Right. 
so that was good that he had them. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and he's being challenged. <laughs> That's good for him. Clayton always challenged himself. Yeah. Good boy. Um, don't we all? So we, we don't, don't have not a. Everyone, no, no, no. <laughs> we no longer have a rep for the collaborative. Um, Ashley was doing it, and it's just too much of a time time commitment or whatever. If anybody's interested, at some point we could offer you and nominate you to attend. Um, it's it is really fascinating. You think school committees are challenging? That one is. I forget how many members. Do you, do you go to some of their stuff? Oh my God, their board is because it's. I can't even count how many towns. Thirty-eight. Mm -hmm. I think it's massive. So. Yeah, I, I used to really like going. It's very dynamic, but it's just, so if anybody has an interest, well, we can nominate you. But. I have to finish my master's degree first. Yeah, then. that's fine. Oh, no problem. Um, is there any interest in an executive session, or are we good till the next time, mm -hmm. since it's all just developing? Next time, we'll have more to talk about. Okay. It's so theoretical now. Okay. If there's nothing else, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Okay. Aye.